Chances are you have no idea about the real reason why you procrastinate. I mean, even major universities are completely confused about the root causes of procrastination. It's not to do with time management or discipline or motivation or even the specific thing that you're procrastinating on. New science has revealed the real root causes of procrastination. And if you want to get rid of this problem, you must first deeply understand it. And in order to deeply understand it, we've got to understand how this wooden plank and this weird concoction of ketchup and soya sauce reveals the real truth about why you procrastinate. Procrastination is actually far worse of a problem than most people think. For a long period of my life, I went through a phase of procrastinating on literally everything. 10 hours a day on gaming, just not doing the things that I knew that I should be doing. And when you live your life knowing that there is something you should be doing but you're not doing, it has a huge effect on your mental state. When you promise yourself and you create plans that tomorrow is going to be different, and tomorrow's not different. You lose trust in yourself because effectively you lie to yourself. You lose respect in yourself because you're unable to just do simple things that you know that you should be doing. And it's really quite a brutal place to be in. And procrastination is super interesting because it's irrational and it's unintentional. That means that people procrastinate even when they know it's bad for them and even when they want to stop. And the perfect word, like when I read this word, I completely clicked with it. The word is Greek and it's acrasia. What this means is it's acting against one's better judgment. It's not doing the things you know you should be doing. It's refusing to do basic things that you know are going to benefit you and you know can improve your life, but you don't do them. But why does this problem exist? Why can we not just do the things that we know that we should be doing? If we know we should be doing them, why aren't we doing them? It doesn't make sense. Why are human beings like this? And why do so many people fall into this trap? Well, most people think that it comes down to two different reasons. The first of all being time management. People think that if you just get a little bit better, if you understand these time management hacks, you're going to be able to stop procrastinating. This is not true. But in fact, massive universities like the University of Manchester are still recommending all of their students that if you're procrastinating, you need to get a better understanding of how long you've got left until your assignment. You need to create a weekly plan. You need to set deadlines for yourself. Come on, this isn't the reason it is not time management. Even the University of Rochester says similar things. Most people do these things. They have a clear understanding of the time they've got left to complete the thing they're meant to be doing, but they still procrastinate and that's not the reason. The second reason that some people think is maybe it's because of the specific activity. If you're procrastinating on writing an essay, it's because of the essay. It's because of the specific activity that you're procrastinating on. Maybe that's why you procrastinate. But this isn't true as well. In reality, and there's actually been a couple scientific studies that have really put the nail in the coffin and proven this beyond a shadow of a doubt, procrastination is caused by negative emotions. You don't procrastinate from a specific event, you procrastinate because of the emotions that that event causes you to have. And that's an important distinction. And if we really zoom in, we peek behind the covers of a period of procrastination, we can really start to figure out what's happening there. It's not just some random thing that's happening, there's simple cause and effect. First of all, you imagine doing the event. You imagine starting a business. You imagine going to the gym. You imagine doing that difficult piece of work. You imagine filing your taxes. And when you imagine yourself doing that, you feel a negative emotion around that activity. It makes you feel dread. It makes you feel fear. It makes you feel doubt. It makes you feel guilt. Some kind of a negative emotion comes, even boredom. And because you feel that negative emotion, that's the thing that causes you to procrastinate. And the reason for this is because it's wired into you. Your brain is designed to survive, not thrive. And this causes procrastination for two reasons. First of all, when you get the basics of your life down, you know, you're well fed, you've got shelter. Your brain thinks there's no extra point in going above and beyond. Your brain just wants you to survive. That's the best thing for evolution. 
And in fact, it wants you to preserve energy wherever possible. What's the point in writing an assignment? The brain doesn't understand. The brain thinks you're comfortable. You don't need to go above and beyond. Just do the bare minimum, preserve energy, survive, and carry on the species. This results in you getting to good. It results in you getting to a place of comfort and never beyond. And that's why good is the enemy of great. You get to good, you get comfortable, and it's so difficult to push yourself out of this cycle because the brain wants to preserve energy. And on top of that, the second reason is your brain is wired to avoid negative emotions. It thinks that if you feel a negative emotion, that means that you're in jeopardy of survival. Maybe you're worried because a predator's coming to get you. But in reality, in the modern day, these feelings of negative negativity are often the things that we need to do in order to better ourselves. And because our brain innately doesn't like these negative emotions, whenever you feel a negative emotion about a task you should be doing, the brain again does one of two things. It either rationalizes it, it comes up with excuses for you to not do that thing, or it distracts you from the activity altogether by going towards some instant gratification activity like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Netflix, porn, gaming, something along those lines. Whatever it can do to minimize those negative emotions in the short run, the brain just views that as a great thing and this obviously leads to procrastination. A perfect metaphor for this was presented by Neil Fior. Imagine you're on the street and there's a foot wide wooden beam in front of you and you're just asked to walk along it pretty easy, right? You think, hey, a foot, that's pretty wide. I'm able to walk across that pretty easily. Not a problem at all. You go ahead and you do it. Now imagine that that exact same wooden beam goes shooting up into the air and it's now suspended between two skyscrapers hundreds of meters above the pavement. It's the exact same task, but now are you able to walk across it? Well, you're probably thinking, what if I fall? There's massive consequences. There's massive danger. There's loads of negative emotions of scaredness that you have when you think about doing this activity. And because of that, if your assignment is at the other side of the wooden beam, <laughs> chances are you're not going to go ahead and walk across, right? So it's the exact same task, but because you're feeling negative emotions about that activity, you're far less likely to do it. The worst thing about all of this is that in reality, the wooden beam is actually on the floor, but it's your own psychological tendencies that puts it up between the skyscrapers and allows those negative emotions to come. Whatever it is that you're procrastinating on, think about it from a very logical sense. By creating a lot of self-doubt, by overcomplicating the task, that's when procrastination can come in. When you pretend that the consequences of failing are far greater than they actually are, procrastination comes from that. If you believe that if you don't produce a good piece of work, then that's a flaw in yourself, there's huge consequences of that. If you think that if you don't do the things you know you should be doing, people are gonna view you negatively, there's massive consequences of that. And those negative emotions can seriously be crippling. And now imagine that the skyscraper that you're on is caught on fire and the fire is getting closer and closer and closer towards you. You look at the wooden beam and all of a sudden, it seems like the best option to take and you do it without thinking twice. Most people only act when the fear of inaction is greater than the fear of acting. The negative emotions of procrastinating and leaving things too close to the deadline become so large that then you're able to act. But if you live your life like this, only acting when the fear of inaction becomes great enough, you're never gonna reach your potential, you're never gonna go above and beyond because you're only gonna be doing the bare minimum to survive instead of thrive. And things get worse when we factor in the new research that was done by Pollack and Harris. They discovered that if you feel a negative emotion today, you're far more likely to procrastinate tomorrow. And as we know, procrastination is caused by negative emotions. So you feel negative, so you procrastinate, which makes you feel negative, and then you procrastinate. And we end up in a negative spiral of procrastination, which is super difficult to break out of. And another interesting experiment that kind of takes another view on procrastination, but comes to similar conclusions, was by Emily Pronin. She got two groups of people, and she poured some kind of a disgusting mix of ketchup and soya sauce. And the first group of people, were asked how much of this could you tolerate if you were to drink it right now? Their answer was, eh, you know, around two tablespoons before I'd had enough. The second group of people, she said, how much would you be able to tolerate if you were to drink this in two weeks? They said half of a glass. 
the exact same people, the exact same drink, yet the you know, the, the differences, the amount that they could cope with were far different depending on the timeline. This proves that there is a difference between who you are now and future you, and that humans don't view future you as yourself. It's kind of like what Homer says here. Bam. That's a problem for future Homer. Man, I don't envy that guy. <laughs> And by not viewing future you as yourself, this can obviously cause a lot of problems because you're going to do short term activities that numb your emotions and numb those negative emotions you feel about procrastination, which is actually going to cause you a lot more pain in the future. So the moral of the story is you've got to recognize that procrastination is an emotional problem. And if you combine this knowledge with the fact that procrastination is caused by negative emotions, you've got a clear understanding of what the scientific studies have to say about procrastination. If you want more videos on procrastination, then click the like button and comment down below letting me know, and then I'm gonna make more videos on procrastination. And also subscribe if you wanna see those videos. I'll see you in the next video.